What's up everybody, my name is Danon and welcome to Honestly. Today, I am switching over from the iPhone X over to the OnePlus 7 Pro. I've had my eyes on the OnePlus phones for quite some time now because they just seem to be a very, very thoughtful brand. And I wanted to switch over from Apple, but the thing is, I've been an iPhone user for 10 years now, ever since the iPhone 3G. So I had all these concerns. It was like, oh man, there's gonna be a learning curve. What if my data, my files don't transfer over? How am I supposed to do that anyway? Um, you hear all these rumors about how apps work better on the iPhone than the Android. For all these reasons, I was too much of a coward to switch over to the OnePlus. But finally, the stars aligned because iPhone's new phone was leaked and it basically is the same phone third year running, which is a new low even for Apple. Uh, and meanwhile, OnePlus ups their game and says, hey, look, we don't want to move into that thousand dollar category but we do need to move up a little bit in price point to give you guys these amazing features that are a little bit more expensive. This thing is running eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of hard drive. It's just a fantastic, really awesome, thoughtful phone. And spoiler alert guys, I am a OnePlus fanboy now. Goodbye Apple, forever. So I fell in love with the OnePlus brand, not even the phone, but the brand itself. I fell in love with the brand before I even touched the phone. Because when I went to go check out the phone online and to go buy it, I picked up a case for it because I didn't want to be bathing it. I picked up a warp charger for it because I didn't believe that it was going to come with it. And I picked up a couple screen protectors on Amazon just to make sure that, you know, I was going to be able to use the phone like real life using it, not like holding it in my shirt, like holding it with six hands, you know, like um, I wanted to actually be able to use the phone. But then I received the phone and I start opening the box and in the box, there is a case that comes with the phone. Not only does it come with a case, but it actually comes with the warp charger. And then on top of that, I was using my phone one day and I see like a wrinkle in the screen and I'm like, oh my God, my screen melted. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a viral video. OnePlus ScreenGate 2019. Here we go, YouTube views and subscribers up the wazoo. And then I'm like, wait a minute, is that a screen protector? Like OnePlus, applied a screen protector on the phone before they shipped it out. And I was just like, wait, okay, calm down OnePlus, all right, because you are giving me false hope, believing that a company actually cares about its consumers and cares about its customers and cares about what we need and cares about what we want. Stop it, you give me false hope. And that just blew my mind because I have been so used to being screwed over by Apple who gives you that tiny little dinky charger that can't charge your phone very fast at all. You have to buy a separate charger for it. A case, you can forget about that. A screen protector, you can definitely forget about that. Oh, and I forgot, OnePlus also provides you the little pin to get your SIM card out. Apple used to do that like 10 years ago and now they're kind of like, no thank you, right? Um, a couple downsides though is that OnePlus doesn't provide a USB-C dongle for headphones. Um, and they also don't provide any kind of Bluetooth headphones or headphones at all to mitigate that gap which, to be honest, kind of sucks, but I understand because at least with Apple's um, headphones, I would always toss those anyway, like I never use them, they just kind of collect dust. Uh, the USB-C dongle would have been nice, but the way I see it is like, the warp charger costs like $30. So I'd much rather have that in a box than the USB-C dongle, which costs like $2 on Amazon. So that's my personal take. It sucks, but the alternative would have been much worse, right? So. Really quickly, if you guys like this video, like and subscribe, and if you guys have experience moving from iPhone to Android or even Android to iPhone, I'd love to hear about your experience. Leave a comment below. When I powered on the device, one of the first questions that asked me was, do you want to restore from an iPhone backup? And I was really pleasantly surprised because I was like, oh man, you guys thought about that. You guys thought about people who want to move over to Android. So this is my first Android device, so I don't know if that's going to happen on all your phones or if that's something exclusive to OnePlus. All I know is that I really appreciated that. I skipped that feature for the time being and I was like, let me get let me get into the phone, let me figure out how to use this Android thing. Uh, and it should be a breeze because I'm a tech tuber. I know tech pretty well. A few moments later. How do you how do you do anything? I was so utterly useless. Like I never felt like such a fool, right? Um, but after taking some time to get to know it and digging like deeper into the menus, this is where again the thoughtfulness of OnePlus comes to light because they have an option to change the way the operating system works. And one of the options that they have is 
they allow it to be more similar to the iPhone experience, the iPhone, anything above an iPhone 7 without a hardware button, um, where instead of activating menus using a bottom taskbar, you can uh, swipe just like you would on an iPhone X. Uh, swipe up, swipe down, and things along those lines. And it is just really, really thoughtful. Because OnePlus offers that kind of experience, user experience of their operating system, it allowed me to spend less time worrying about how to use the phone and allowed me to just enjoy the experience. Compared to this, the iPhone just feels like old. And it's really ironic because iPhone started out as kind of the cool, hip, really visually stimulating, uh, modern, device back in the day when PDAs were still a thing, right? And now here comes Android and they're leading the foray in terms of animated graphics and bright colors and cool modern logos and it's it was just awesome. On top of that, it allowed me to enjoy all of OnePlus's features such as that in-screen fingerprint unlock, the pop-up selfie camera, um, and, and, and like the draw on screen to activate gestures. Like it's it's just been fantastic. In terms of using apps on the OnePlus versus my iPhone, I will say that the sentiment is generally true. Apps do work better on the iPhone than on the Android device. And I can't tell if it's a hardware issue, if it's an operating system issue, but for example, scrolling on anything on this device is terrible. So on an iPhone, if I am scrolling through something, let me just give you a physical example here, right? Like if I scroll, you can see that it's very controlled and I'm totally in control of the scrolling experience. If I wanna scroll fast, I can scroll fast and it moves up. On top of that, not only can I do that, but let's say I'm all the way at the bottom and I wanna roll to the top quickly. I hit the top of the screen and it rolls me all the way to the top. This phone has a scrolling issue in the sense that if I am slow scrolling, the first one might be very slow, but the second one will zip it out of control. I mean, it will go insane and fly. On top of that, in some apps, the top to reach the top works. In some apps, it doesn't, so it's inconsistent there as well. Um, and then just some of the design choices on some of these apps just don't make a lot of sense. They don't think about how a lot of people use their devices one-handed and would prefer to have controls on the bottom half. For example, ironically, Google Chrome, which is a Google, you know, app uh, on the uh, on the OnePlus, sucks compared to the iPhone. In order to start a new tab, you have to click the top right on the OnePlus. Where again, if you are using a phone one-handed, your hand stays at the bottom half of the phone. The on an iPhone, to open a new tab, it's on the bottom right. I don't know who is developing this thing, but they should get fired. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't make a lot of sense. The only other issue is that because this phone is so large and because the edges are curved and because I enjoy using my phone one-handed, when I have to reach something on the far left side of the screen with my thumb, my hand ends up touching that curved glass. And because of that, when I hit something with my thumb, it sometimes won't register because it believes that my palm is a finger and so palm rejection isn't great. In terms of battery life, this thing comes off the charger at 6 a.m. and goes on the charger at 11 p.m. And between them, I'm text messaging, I'm browsing the web a lot, I'm checking my personal emails, but more than anything, I'm checking work emails and I'll check every five minutes. So this thing is rarely off. And with all that usage at 11 p.m. at night, I've noticed that this thing is around 30% battery life. Compare that with my iPhone X, same usage, same everything. This thing comes home at about four, not comes home, sorry, gets plugged in at 11 at night at about 40% battery life. But here's also something to keep in mind, is that I keep this screen way brighter than I do the iPhone because it's just more fun. I don't know how to put it. it, it really is just more fun. And on top of that, I keep the screen at the 90 hertz refresh rate as well. In terms of that fingerprint scanner, it just works so well. It works amazing and I'm glad they brought this thing back because that is one of my most missed features on any phone in the past like three years. Because I hate the idea of talking to somebody and be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like you're in a conversation, you're talking to somebody and you're like, like I, I hate that idea. So just being able to like turn your phone on, scan it and it's on is just awesome. After getting used to all of its features, I was like, let me go ahead and try that iPhone restore option. So I wiped my phone completely and then rebooted it. And then it was like, do you want to you know, restore from an iPhone? And this is where I learned that I think that method is a generic Android method because what it does is it takes all of your iPhone files, backs them up onto a Google Drive and then pushes them onto your Android device 
just keep in mind that your free account free Google Drive account only can hold 15 gigs so anything over that and you're going to need to upgrade to the two dollars a month 100 gigabyte plan and there are bigger plans than that if you have more than 100 gigabytes worth of data so that's the way it kind of did it and it was just okay it didn't work great but when you get into the phone OnePlus has a proprietary app and I think it backs it up differently and it backs it up for free or it can restore it for free because what it did was it created like a, a network and you're, you can connect your iPhone to it and then it seemed to be downloading data from your iPhone. I think that was free. At this point, I already purchased the Google Drive Cloud account. So again, I don't know if I would have to have paid because I just I just wouldn't know at that point. So keep that in mind. All I know is that I was able to back up all my files, like all my pictures, all my contacts, all that stuff was on here. So do I regret picking up the OnePlus 7 Pro? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I highly recommend these guys. This is my new go-to phone. So long, Apple. OnePlus is my new phone bay. So what about you guys? Have you guys ever gone from iPhone to Android or maybe Android to iPhone? I'd love to hear about your guys' experience. Leave a comment down below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Until next time, stay honest.